Hi, I'm Dr Susan Collings and I'm one of the Chief Investigators of the Fostering Lifelong Connections for Children in Permanent Care study funded by the Australia Research Council. Today I'll be sharing some practice learnings and some resources developed as part of that study uh, and this time the practice focused on debriefing as a way of supporting parents and family members. I'd like to first of all acknowledge that I'm coming to you today from the lands of the Wadi Wadi people of the Dharawal Nation, but indeed to acknowledge that wherever you are joining from, we are meeting on unceded Aboriginal land and I'd like to pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and um, thank them, the traditional owners of the land for their continued care and custodianship. So it's important that family members are involved in decisions and have an opportunity to be heard uh, about the way family time happens um, because this is important uh, in ensuring that everybody has um, meets on the same uh, level playing field and that uh, everybody's contribution and viewpoints can be heard and taken into account in order to make sure that family time is an enriching um, experience for children and young people. Uh, and really, we heard from caseworkers on this study that that was an area of practice they would like to develop in. So two teams worked for around eight months using the action research cycle that we have talked about elsewhere, and you can hear learn more about that on our website. Um, those caseworkers were engaged in cycles of plan, do, study, act. So cycles of coming together to plan that practice, to study what, what happens when they trialled a new practice, to learn from it and adapt, and then and then go back to review. And they did that together, um, both individually and then coming together to reflect on what they were learning through doing that practice. And our role was to support them to develop skills um, and to develop uh, ways to approach this practice. So we proposed together that caseworkers would uh, contact parents of children on their caseloads and check in about upcoming family time visits and ask some some um, questions, some very general questions about how they were going, whether there was anything that, that was getting in the way. Um, and then to go back to those same family members, particularly parents, afterwards and asked about how um, their family time went and whether they themselves, the caseworkers, could have uh, assisted in any way to overcome any problems that came up. So this is a really small um, intentional practice to see what came up when caseworkers engaged directly with parents. And here's just a small case study which encapsulates some of the issues that can come up and how they can be responded to. So Josh is 14 and is now in a stable placement with a foster carer, but he has had quite a disrupted placement history. He also lives with uh, ADHD and trauma, developmental trauma, which both make his communication skills um, um, reduced at times and his ability to um, emotionally regulate also harder. His mum, Angela, lives with mental illness and sometimes that can prevent her attending scheduled family time visits and so she may uh, cancel at short notice. When they're together, Josh often spends a lot of time on the computer rather than talking to or um, doing something with his mother. So the caseworker, the caseworker, um, communicated directly with Angela um, regularly around family time and heard how guilty Angela felt when she when she couldn't attend visits, how bad this made her feel, um, and also that she also felt there was more that could be done to make family time interactive and meaningful. 
So the caseworker said suggested that Angela try uh, putting time limits on the amount of time Josh spent on the computer. And also she made the made a point of reassuring Josh that even when Angela didn't attend case uh, didn't attend family time because of a mental illness, it was um, it was not that she didn't want to spend time with him. And the caseworker encouraged them to exchange text uh, phone numbers and to um, have conversations as a first point strategy. This didn't really work so well because Josh. Uh, his verbal communication skills made it hard for him to interact over the phone. So the case worker suggested scheduling regular phone calls in advance so Josh could prepare himself. He knew when it was coming and he could come up with a list of conversation starters. Although he's not fond of talking on the phone, he does communicate with Angela directly by the phone now um, by sending her memes and emojis and she returns these by sending him funny videos um, and this helps both of them know that they're that well, for Josh to know he's kept in mind in his mother's mind even when they're not together and for him um, to be able to build that stronger um, strengthen their connection build his stronger connection with his mum so what did we learn through the practice we, the caseworkers, observed and reflected that actually taking this time out to talk to parents before and after family time really did um, create a space for parents to learn to express what they felt and what they wanted from family time and to start to build that trust with caseworkers. Um, they felt heard uh, and they also, it also gave caseworkers an opportunity to rethink how family time was happening for that child and to respond to what they were hearing from parents by maybe tailoring the support around them and making changes. Uh, and this could be something as small as learning that a father um, felt really embarrassed that he didn't have the money to buy his kids nice things when they had family time. He didn't have nice food to take along. And so the caseworker could respond by perhaps giving him a voucher so that he could um, have a you know have, bring some things to family time and then feel like he was fulfilling some of his fatherly role um, and and that the children were um, you know were going to be able to share some food together while they were with him. So what we heard too was that from the caseworker's perspective, there was real tangible improvements in the experiences that all family members had. So the family members not just the children, but their parents and other family members enjoyed family time more and that there was this tangible strengthening of a relationship with the caseworker because parents felt and other family members felt heard and seen. And they felt like their issues um, were no longer invisible and that they there were some solutions that could be used by caseworkers to help improve um, the next time they met together. So this was a really, um, a very, uh, a really positive uh, practice from the perspective of those caseworkers. And what we did uh, as part of this was work with two parents who were experts by lived experience of having children in care, uh, Tegan Whitaker and Chantelle Rossi, to co-design a series of tip sheets. And you'll see the first one here um, focuses on um, understanding the, uh, the, the pain parents are feeling, getting parents to reflect on and, 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 um, and understand how, what state they're in around family time, to think about what might be triggering their reactions. Um, and when they, as you see on the left-hand side with the with the uh, using the colour coding um, of the traffic lights, you know, green through to yellow, then amber and, and to red, thinking about what builds up for parents. And so they understand where they're at in the lead up to family time and can communicate that. Um, and then what are they doing? What can they do to, to take care of themselves today? Um, and to learn about themselves. Um, what do they notice? So seeing healing as part of a sort of a process. Um, two other tip sheets that we developed uh, were this, um, this tip sheet 
um, that's about nourishing and recognising parents having a been the first spark of connection with their child, trying to get parents to think about when this child is surrounded by people who love and care about them, um, they can, they'll feel more secure. And when parents know what's happening for their child, they're better able to support them during family time. So bringing parents into that conversation, understanding feelings and using, as you can see, the sort of um, um, mood images to think about what parents can do, what children might be trying to communicate and what they might be coping with around family time so that parents understand how children might be presenting does not necessarily relate to their willingness or their um, desire to be with their parents, but it might be about other things and certainly about difficulty expressing those feelings. And what parents can do that's positive, celebrate positives with their child, not make promises they can't keep, the consistency, telling children they're proud of them. So really simple messages here. Um, and then finally, um, thinking about what parents can do for themselves so they are caring for themselves so they can care for their children. Um, and that might be around doing some um, relaxation and mindfulness activities, taking time out, um, things that make parents feel good. And then starting with the plan, how do they plan and celebrate successes, setting goals for themselves. So a lot of this is directed at parents um, working you know, with themselves and with their own support networks to improve how they're able to be um, so that they can be a better resource. It's also really helpful for them and for caseworkers and carers to think about parents in this way as people who are um, taking steps to uh, be present and to show up to fa our family time in, in really um, present and positive ways um, for their children. So, um, a reflective exercise we thought might be helpful is just to think about a parent of a child you're working with. When was the last time you checked in with them directly about what their views of family time were and what, what happened during that conversation? What questions could you ask them if you were to follow up them now? And how could you use some of the resources that were developed by parents as part of this study to spark a conversation with that parent? about their experience of family time and their wishes for um, their relationship with their child into the future. What could what could that, uh, that look like? So please do visit our website at www.rccf-fostering-connections.sydney.edu.au and please give us any feedback um, at the email address you see on your screen. Thanks very much. Appreciate your time.